we're just going to converse and talk about maybe help some people that might be uncertain right now. Hey, everybody. Yes, I love that. I'm going to take orders. Of, like, nothing is done right. Anyways, Elena is doing a live interview with Mike C. Rock. This is him right here. She's doing a live interview. See him right there. What are you made of? What are you made of? Gold, baby. Made of gold. <laughs> what are you guys talking about today? Talk to him until we start. We get this ready. is preparing on my end. We're about to go live on right, Mike's podcast. What are you made of? Here he is again. Just put something real quick in the title, just that it's who it is. And then you wrote. She wants me to move my ball. Whatever. Talk to my people, Bobby. Say I, hello. I love you. Just yourself. Are you kidding me? Let him start it, Bobby. Oh, Come on. I, I don't have... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the pretty hair she does today. Oh I was supposed to run down and do the stairs. Are you kidding? I do have good hair today. See, it paid off. <laughs> All right, we're live on Facebook now, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Getting started here. All right, let me record on the computer. Welcome back, everyone. It's your boy C Rock, Mike C Rock, on the What Are You Made Of podcast. And we are coming to you today. I think the date's like March 23rd, mm -hmm. um, and we're in the midst of some uh, very, very challenging things going on, uncertain things going on, but we're here to try to help <laughs> and maybe uh, provide some some kind of certainty and control in your life, maybe. Um, but I have the awesome and talented Elena Cardo with me today, and she is going to tell us what she's made of. And before she does get into that, I want to give you a little bit of brief bio for those of you that may have not have heard of her. Um, she is actually, um, married to Grant Cardone. She is the wife of Grant Cardone or Grant Cardone is the husband of Elena Cardone as she likes to say. Oh, gotcha. yes. Uh, but she's the woman strong enough to be married to Grant Cardone. She's the mother to Sabrina and Scarlett, who my daughter, Tiny, AKA Sophie, uh, loves to death. She has been credited as the visionary of the empire, authored her book, build an empire, how to have it all. She is the host of the G&E show and Women in Power. She received number one on Forbes' top 20 entrepreneurs to follow. She won Global Woman of the Year at the Global Summit. Do you want me to keep going? Oh, she is I'm good, man. This Empire. is good for my ten ego. X I need this today. 10X ladies, guys, 10X ladies, gals, 10X ladies. Uh, let, you know, look into that. And she is a woman on a mission to help you create your 10X empire no matter what is going on in the world. That's right, right. Elena? That's right. That's right. And you know what? With everything going on right now, it's all designed to shrink you in and make you feel small and literally like we're now confined to our homes. So the tendency is to think that uh, you're not as powerful as you really are. And when you list off all those things, it just kind of reinvigorated me. Like, that's right. I, I do this. I can accomplish this. I'm bigger than a virus. I'm bigger than all of this. So... So I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad you reminded me of who we really are. Now, I got to tell you, um, I don't know that I would be here doing a podcast right now back in the day prior to me getting into the 10X movement, to the 10X army, I call it, um, because, you know, sometimes, like, when this stuff would be going on, we'd, I don't know, go to a bar and drink or mm -hmm. do different things, stupid things that were unproductive, what we thought made us feel better. And I want to thank you and Grant and the rest of the team um, for redirecting my life, my, my employees' lives, my family's life. My wife came to the 10X Growth Conference and uh, came back a woman on fire, wrote four contracts for real estate the first week she got back, and she hasn't stopped working since. Wow. This was and her so first she, one? 
Uh, yeah, that was. Her. I had to get her there because I had to show her what it was all about. And so, uh, yeah. So listen, the what are you made of movement, guys? Waymo, as we call it, is all about rule number one: turn every negative, anything that appears negative, setbacks, letdowns, into rocket fuel for your future. And that's what it's all about. And we've been all been through a lot before, and uh, this is why we've advanced so much it's because of the things we've been through. Been through. So, Elena, first and foremost, I want to ask you: What are you made of? Well, times like this really tell, you know, but certainly I'm, you know, in the moments when I'm scared the most, I use discipline to make myself go through a structure of a daily routine of what I can control so that I can get in the habit of having building confidence during these times. And I definitely have the willingness and the trip to be ethical, like you said, during these times and to figure out what I can control. I understand that my role as a powerful woman, if that's what I want to be and become, also includes that others may look to me at times like this, including my husband, to be a beacon of comfort and support and encouragement um, to him and to stable the environment. So, you know, I take my role very seriously and, you know, there is a lot going on in with Grant and everyone. I, I mean, it's everywhere. No one can escape this right now. Anywhere in the world, you cannot escape the severity of the implications of what this thing could lead to, not just on a physical health um, situation, but the sickness of the overall economy, you know, is, is at stake here. So, you know, I, I, what am I made of? I'm made of, you know what, I'm going to commit myself and hold myself accountable to, to be strength for others while they're figuring it out, to be calm, to be stable, to be uplifting, to try to see the best side of this and figure out how to make my moves and, 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 and plan out the future so that the rest of, um, the people in my environment can can not only survive this but can thrive on the other side of this you know and and sometimes you have to kind of uh, be willing to uh, make hard choices right now and 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 do some things that you don't want to do um, in order to protect the good of all the ones that are really going to be for there for you um, when this is all said and done yeah, um, you said it perfectly. Um, and the thing is, is that when you're a leader, most people don't want to be a leader because of the responsibility that comes with it. And or they're worried about what people think when you make decisions as a leader, the tough decisions. And uh, that's been evident. And when people's eyes are on you, when you're a leader, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a There's lot, a lot of, of pressure responsibility. Involved. And a lot of people at times like this want to play the blame game and they want to have someone to be angry about because they didn't put themselves in a situation where they could be viable. And sometimes you have to shrink in order to, sometimes you have to retreat in order to rebuild the coffers to come out stronger. It doesn't mean you won't expand later. Sometimes you have to be willing to make a tough call that, um, you know, it's very difficult to be a leader in those scenarios because, you know, because you do make yourself vulnerable to attacks. You make yourself vulnerable to, um, enemies you know do you i mean i i cannot wait to get on the other side of this so i can talk freely about everything but there are people out there in the world that you know and i don't want to make this a debbie downer show but i'm always transparent and what i'm going through right now is there are people out there that truly look at this time and want to see us go belly up and want to see us fail. That is not um, some crazy panic thing that is going on. It's a reality that I have to deal with. And so, you know, I use every ounce of everything I have, going back to your original question, what am I made of? I have to, everyone has been sucker punched in the gut right now. It's how you continue to pick yourself up. And I am more determined now to make myself even a bigger beast, a bigger monster, stronger, better, because I cannot wait to give the metaphorical punch in the face to all those people when myself and my team and my staff and my community and the world that is with us on this movement grows bigger and more powerful and more successful, 
personally, financially, spiritually. I just, I, I can't wait to, you know, because all those people want to do, they have no products of their own. So their biggest product is trying to hope that they can squash or get happiness out of seeing somebody else fail. And I refuse. Right. right. And, and Elena, this, this, you guys help so many people. And the mission is about helping people. Money is the product, the byproduct of it, right? And everybody starts to hate on things, but if people really understood the lives that you guys have impacted and changed from your movement, there would be a lot less haters, but they just don't know. And see, me knowing it and living it, um, you know, but see, here's the thing. is It's a fine line for me, too. I mean, I've been, I've been jammed up. I've been stolen from. I've, been, I've had all those things. I've had people hating on me and wishing the worst. I don't know if it's the right thing. I, I fight with this all the time. Like, I use that as motivation. Like I get fired up like this too, and I think I'm gonna jam it right up there. Uh, but but the thing is, I don't. I, I fight with that sometimes. It's like, is that the right thing to do or think? And I go through phases where I do it, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna show them. I'm gonna be a role model, and I'm gonna show them, and that that's how it's gonna get back at them. And then then we're just gonna shine. But do you fight that like that that? When you little- when you refuse to fail, you know. Flourish and prosper is the best revenge and there's nothing wrong with that. It's purely healthy. And sometimes you use what you can to, to, to make you stronger and turn it into the fuel that fires your flame or whatever. And then you find when you get on the other side, because I've found that to be true too. Once you get to the place where you're winning so much in life, you truly don't care and want to cause anyone real harm. You just w- want to care about lifting everybody else up around you, you know, and yeah, but yeah. on the same and the same um, line, there really isn't anything wrong with um, delivering an effective blow to an enemy, a real enemy, an enemy, somebody who literally doesn't want to see anyone or anything get better. That's a real enemy. And there are real enemies on this planet that don't want to see people succeed. Right. And there's right. nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with being able to be strong enough to deliver an effective blow. And sometimes delivering an effective blow comes literally in the form of delivering an effective blow. And sometimes it comes in the form of being successful and making as many people around you as successful as possible too. And right. that is a, that is a, that is an effective blow that, that just happens to have another beneficial reward, which is you get to have pride in yourself. Yep. I have a feeling that, uh, you haven't had your boxing training in a while. I'm, a and, little uh, I'm glad, I'm glad can to be here tell? for that. You could, you could do it. You could do that on this show. <laughs> okay. I, I, I get a little aggressive. Like I, I have it. a I joke. I have a joke with, um, with my trainer, Javi. I say, I train to kill people so I don't have to kill people. And I'm, in real hey. life, in real life, I've never been, I mean, you know, knock on wood, God bless. I never want to be in a real fight. I have never been in a fight. I have never, and I never want to, but I do get a little aggressive. I can't can't say the same. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I've had to be, when you get jumped as a kid with 12 year old kid, 13 year old kid, and then you got to figure out how to handle yourself. um, You figure it out. I've, I've done it. Well, I just, you know, hope I never get put in that actual scenario because uh, I've been doing it for almost two years and I really think something's wrong with me at this point. It's just not, it does not come naturally to me. But when I am lacking it for a while, that aggression comes out. So tomorrow I'm going to do 33 flights of stairs with my ruck vest to calm down a little bit. I love it. I love it. Let it come through. Hey, listen, what do you think the difference is between this thing right now, the biggest thing that you can see? Because I know there's a lot of unknown right now. But what's the, what's the difference between this and 2008? Because the 10X movement, a lot of people don't understand because they, don't, they haven't studied. I've immersed myself in it. I know a lot came out from 2008. I'm in the mortgage business. So I was there. I went through all that. Um, and, and a lot of it, what you guys have done, came from that. But what do you think so far, what you're seeing right now, the biggest difference between that and now is? This is biblical. This is of a historic events. We've never seen numbers like this in our lifetime. Like, uh, I mean, God, you know, unemployment where, I mean, I, I don't even want to think about it. You know, it's, this is, this is, this is a whole new level. This is, 
This is the perfect storm. Well, let's let's ask this then. What lessons did you learn in 2008 that you can use in this since we're talking about what are you made of? Uh, the lessons that I learned from 2008 are <laughs> don't lose money, protect the empire, surround yourself with people who have the same intentions of yours, be willing to work every single second on yourself to become better. Um, we're set up better this time than we were last time. Um, in terms of uh, reserves of courage and um, tenacity and knowledge and fortitude with each other, um, we, we, we've, we, we have such a good foundation right now um, that we, we have a, it's, it's scary, but it's not as scary as the first time because we've been asked this question so many times, what would you do if you went to zero if you had no money? And, you know, the only thing I can say is I would get it a lot faster this time. And the reason is, is because I have courage, because I know what I'm made of, because I have integrity, I have honor, I'm willing to work, I'm willing to edu self-educate myself, I have discipline, I have, you know, I, ha I know, I know, I know who I am. I know that when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. So I have self-reliance, um, which breeds confidence. I don't need money to make me who I am. It's what you said earlier. Money and trophies are exactly that. They're representations. They're ex we live on an economic planet. You use that for financial freedom to make moves to get around. But that, can't, that, that doesn't dictate who I am as a spiritual being. That does not dictate my power, what I can control over my universe. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? I was just telling my team this the other day. Like, I've been through this stuff, and now we have this 10x mindset. And that confidence that comes with it, man. I, I mean, I know this is serious out there, and I'm not denying it. I've already acknowledged it. And the other thing from 2008, which allows us to do, you guys and us, is to recognize it faster. Mm -hmm. Because before, you might have denied it a little bit longer, and then you got behind the eight ball a little bit. Now, this time, hopefully, we caught it a little bit faster than before and got a jump start on damage control or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So between husband and wife, as you're going through these things, yeah, it's give us stressful. some things that you guys, you guys, you, I mean, listen, there's conflict and then lie. stress and then you could go at it a lot and then you have to, you know, you got to apologize to each other because I've God forbid, I'm, I've been a dick the last week or so sometimes in moments. Okay. And I'm, my wife's a, a saint and she's very strong willed too. She's very aggressive. She's Italian like me. Like uh, me. We go through the like same me. things, but yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, what are, you, what are some of your tips that you guys do to, to make sure that you get right back on track? If you Because, look, we're human. We fall off sometimes mm -hmm. as we're going through that. But give us some things that you guys focus on to get back on track. We focus on we have meetings, and we, we try to figure out what are we working for, what do we want to exchange, how can we come back faster to rebuild our community, um, and that becomes senior. You know, I keep reminding him and myself – I need to go easy on the people around me right now because everyone, no matter how positive you want to be, and we all are trying to remain positive. I mean, I don't want to set panic. I don't want to go down the zombie apocalypse route either, you know, but we are on, we are in uncharted territory. It is unstiff, you know, it does feel we're stressed, you know. So at these times, you have to make sure you go easy on your loved ones. Catch yourself when you want to just start bashing them. Take, take a walk around the house. Go into another room. What can you do to take care of yourself? Make sure you get all of your sleep. Um, make sure you put yourself to bed at, at a certain time. I, Grant and I have been going to bed at 9.30, religiously 9.30, 10, shutting it off. Just shutting it off and making sure that this physical body is strong and in strong condition to handle anything financial immunity and, you know, virus-wise. We need to be strong. We're taking our vitamins. We're drinking our water. We're getting our fresh air. We're exercising every day. Like, what can we take care of? first and foremost, and then getting our purpose and so together on the same page. Usually during these times, Grant and I come together stronger because um, we're no longer a threat to each other. We realize we need each other to get through these times. So the pettinesses become a little 
a little less, we get back on track faster because, you know, when the attacks start coming, and they do, and they have, I need to be there for him. You know, that's, that's the role I, I accepted, and that's the role, that is my role in this relationship, which is the little cog and the little wheel, which is in everything, the 10X movement. So that's what we do. Well, um, and one other thing before I, I'm going to ask you about your, your girls because my daughter absolutely loves your girls and uh, oh, she's, just she's in the other room. room. I'm going to bring her in. Hey, how are you? That's Remember smart. I gave you one of these bracelets when we were at the thing said, what are you made of? But um, my daughter wants to say hi to you in a minute. So are you going to be around? Yeah, I'll be here. Okay, I'll get her I'll in a second. You. I'll get you, okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, what I think I was going to ask you is you guys both coach people. You have the 10X ladies and Grant does his thing and... What I have trouble with turning off sometimes because I coach my team. I coach what are you made of movement now. I come home and coach my kids. And they're, and it's when I come home, i got to figure out a way to balance it. I don't know if there's a better word for balance, but uh, figure <laughs> yeah, it out. I remember that. And then, no, like, I like, understand. You, I understand. And you guys coach each other and you get on each other's nerves. Like how do you approach Grant when you need to change something about him? Or do you have a method that you use when you have a strong-willed husband or think oh, guy God. that coaches? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I am not going to lie. He is he but I know that challenge, you know, so I just have to, you know, find different ways. Sometimes I do it wrong. Sometimes I come at him with an attack that gets me nowhere. Sometimes it doesn't get me nowhere, though. Actually, sometimes it uh, he percolates with it. And then I see changes. Sometimes I'm like, hey, let's let's agree not to just kind of get upset. Let me finish what I'm going to say. Then you say what you're going to say, and I'll yeah. let you finish. Don't interrupt me. Let's talk about this. How do you want to handle it? But, you know, like there's different ways. Sometimes I, I'll always make sure he's well-rested and well-fed, though. Those are my two just like as a woman, like, yeah. like I just know my husband, if he's tired or angry, it's going to be <laughs> – more difficult for me right and then how about how's what's the best way to approach you if you if somebody sees something and whether it's holding you accountable as a husband or um something that they feel like that you need to maybe you're not seeing what's the best way to approach you i mean the best way i like to be approached is not the way i get approached but the best way i like to be approached is you know i like the acknowledgments of the rightnesses and i like acknowledgement of um you know, that. And then I, w I like to segue into, hey, I see this. Is there a way we can improve that? Do you see that there's an out point there? How are you feeling about this? This is what I perceive on the matter. Can this get stronger or this part is out? I need you to help, you know, help make this area go up. I don't know how you want to do it. That's your division. You figure it out. But I, I perceive this little area. Maybe it's the kids are fighting too much. And rather than him accusing me of why that is, or I'm not doing a good enough job as a mother, maybe he can bring it to my attention and say, hey, you know, I've, I've noticed this is going on. Is there something you can come up with that can maybe handle that? And then I can say, you know what? Yeah. Okay. They're bored. I need to give them activities. I need to give them responsibilities or roles in my family and say, you're responsible for this. And I need, you know, give them projects. They need stuff to do too. You know, yeah. but that would be an yeah. incredible way of how I would we, like to be approached. Not like, you know, oh, you're not spending enough time with the kids and they're off fighting and you're off doing whatever. And, oh, you're getting your hair done or you and Bobby are playing all day. And, you know, like, like, don't <laughs> mess with me like that. A, it's not true. And B, don't attack what I know I'm good at. You know, like. Yeah, nobody wants to hear that stuff. No. Like, nobody, men or women. So, no. That's right. We all, we all do it, though, sometimes. That we all you know? do it. And I know I make mm -hmm. mistakes, you know, with Grant, too. It's, it's easier for me to say, you should do this and you should do that. And why don't you do this and why don't you do that? Because I don't have the reality of what he has to go through when he makes the hard calls and has to hammer and, you know, ground grind it out it's easy for me to be in the background like oh yeah that's what you should do when he feels sometimes that he feels i don't really have the full understanding of the inner operations of how everything works and that irritates him so i right. kind of have to find my ba it's it's balance we'll call it that you kind of have to find what you know what really works right right well listen i want to first of all too before i bring little tiny in here uh, I want to thank you very much for coming on today during, you know, under the circumstances. I'm going to keep working. I don't stop working um, unless they 
pluck me from this planet, Sea Rock's gonna be Sea Rock. It's just the way it is. And uh, and uh, Tiny, wanna say hi to Miss Selena? Wave to her, say hi. 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 Say hi now. Go ahead. Hi. <laughs> so uh, are the girls by so she can say hi real yeah, quick? Yeah. Will you go get Scarlet? And do you have uh, do you have like your your uh, TEDx ladies right now? Don't you have something going on that people can join? That I'm, I'm yes, I'm doing my 10x ladies network again. It's a free networking of 10x women from around the world. I've decided that I'm going to go live uh, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go to 10xladies.com forward slash network and join up. You'll get my blogs, my emails, and you'll be reminded of when we can, when you can click on to the Zoom to be connected to these women. And the goal is during these unsettling times, at least we have each other to hold each other accountable. What is our role? What are we, what are we to do in our, with our families, our communities, and how can we all get through this and thrive on the other side? So... Um, and these Zoom calls, guys, these Zoom calls, if you're not on Zoom calls, some kind of supportive group right now, it, these have changed everything for us since the, the 10X mentor calls back in, I think, November they started. We have numerous ones. We're on every night. There's a call that you can get on. If you need a call to get on besides the 10X ladies one on any other night, let me know. I can connect you. I'm telling you it would change your life as, as we're going through this especially. And by the way, this is her book. Empire. My wife and I have both read it. Wanted to be on the same page, and uh, okay. So this is tiny. Let me put, let me put this here. You want to talk to her here? You go. Hello. Okay. How Say hi. Hi. Say what are you doing? Tell her. Talk this to her. is Scarlett. Just so you don't get confused, don't be confused with the other one because that's yeah. happened before. <laughs> you don't like being confused with Sabrina. Did we forget her name? No, I did not. Sabrina. I just had a little stutter, but I didn't forget my own daughter's <laughs> name, for the record. She's actually done that before. She switched her names. Yeah, I switched their names a lot. But, you know, just to out Grant, he's forgotten your middle name before, and I've had to <laughs> remind him. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. That made her day. She's been watching you, girl, you girls on... Uh, on Instagram, on my Instagram and stuff, and she always like, can I send them a video? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I I'll sure, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, you know, she's on, uh, she's on uh, Instagram, Scarlett Cardone. She could, okay. you know, right, I'll she'll respond I'll, on the we'll, comments. Yeah, we'll send your videos over, okay? All right, she gave a thumbs up. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it, and thank you all for listening to the What Are You Made Of podcast with your boy C-Rock. Please go subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and go watch. If you want to watch these, YouTube, Mike C. Rock, Scirocco. Get out there and check us out and support us. We love you guys. We appreciate you, and we're here for you as you go through this. If you have any questions or just want to talk, shoot me a message, man. Thank you so much, Miss Gardo. Oh, Scardo. you got it. Thank you. Appreciate you. And tell yeah. Bobby we said bye, too. Oh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching in. I just did a podcast with Mike there and uh, wanted to include my Instagram live. Also just wanted to remind you all the 10X Ladies is going to be every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time if you want to join that group. Yes, Rock has just posted it, 10xladies.com forward slash network. And you can join and and you know be a part of a group of fabulous women that are here and have your back. Peace out. Thank you. What was it again? <laughs> Although I have a feeling that wasn't such a pretty face. Okay, bye guys. Thank you so much.